first time to my YouTube channel, I just want to say welcome. Uh, today we're talking about uh, the connection between hives and thyroid problems. You know, earlier this week I had a consult with a new patient who had chronic hives, and as I was going through the patient's records, there were a few things that just really stood out to me related to the potential root causes of the chronic hives that this patient, this, uh, patient was struggling with. And I want to share some of my thoughts um, about that case with you today. Because over the years, these are things that I've seen over and over and over again and with many of my patients that I've worked with. And so hopefully, if you can relate to any of these things, it'll help you overcome this struggle with chronic hives. If you have chronic hives, then you're probably all too familiar with the symptoms of blotchy, itchy, raised skin, the welts uh, all over your body sometimes. Um, and so if you look at this picture here, this is a typical example, if you've never seen what hives look like or you're, you're thinking that you have hives, this is a classic example of what hives looks like. And if you visited your primary care doctor or even a dermatologist over the years because you've been you know, plagued with these, these chronic hives, then you're probably sent home with some kind of antihistamine or steroid cream. Um, and these may treat your hive symptoms, but they're not going to fix your chronic hives in the long run. In fact, some people using these will only make matters much, much worse, especially for those of you who have what's called histamine intolerance. Sometimes those welts are itchy red bumps caused by certain foods like nuts and eggs and tomatoes and fish and milk. Sometimes hives are caused by certain medications or perhaps even a change in the ingredients in a medication. Even if you've been taking this medication for a long time and all of a sudden you start having these symptoms, these hives, it's something to consider. So again, be aware of that. Another thing is that sometimes these symptoms of hives might be a warning sign pointing to a metabolic problem. And I'll talk about some of these things uh, that I see in patients here in just a bit. One thing I can tell you is this. If you want to get to the bottom of these hives, you want to get to the root cause of this, it becomes very important to investigate many of the different symptoms that you may have because the hives may be a symptom of something else that is out of balance in your body. So a couple of things that I want you to ask yourself and consider when it comes to hives. If you suffer with chronic hives, but you also experience symptoms of low thyroid, these would be things like fatigue and brain fog, weight gain despite diet and exercise, maybe depression, um, anxiety, hair loss. If you relate to any of these, I highly recommend that you get what's known as a complete thyroid panel. Many doctors will check the thyroid because, again, we know that there is a very high correlation between thyroid disease and, and, um, and hives. However, very few doctors do more than a thyroid screening, which I often find misses the majority of thyroid problems in those patients who have hives. Hives has also been associated with not only uh, autoimmune thyroid disease, something known as Hashimoto's disease, which is when the immune system destroys the thyroid gland, but hives is often related to other autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and angioedema. And while immediate relief can often be achieved through the application of prednisone and cortisone creams, I want you to realize again that this is really only a temporary fix while the next flare up is just around the corner waiting to happen. You know, studies actually show that anywhere between 45% all the way up to 55 and 60% of individuals with chronic hives have one underlying autoimmune disease. Perhaps you already know that you have an underlying autoimmune disease. Maybe you have lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. Maybe you know you have thyroid problems. And if this is the case, there are, very, uh, there are a few articles that I have written on uh, a topic called autoimmune triggers that I think will be incredibly helpful for you to watch. So if you visit my website, drhagmar.com, and you just type in autoimmune triggers, that information, even though it, it speaks to many people with thyroid problems, it holds true for every autoimmune disease that's out there. You have to identify these triggers. So addressing key components that contribute to your overall health and identifying your autoimmune triggers is absolutely essential, right? It's an important part of the healing process of hives. It becomes a very important healing part of the healing process to overcome many of these other health problems that you might be experiencing. Now, if you're not familiar with functional medicine, functional medicine is very different than traditional medicine, okay? Functional medicine takes into consideration the unique makeup of each patient's lifestyle and how their diet contributes to their health, how daily and lifetime stressors contributes to these things, and how all these things come together influencing and impacting one's health. 
So there are six signs I want you to consider if you're watching this video and if you have either hives or someone you care about and you love has hives or if you even have an autoimmune disease. So these six things, these six keys I think about when it comes to treating hives is number one is your diet, right? Uh, this is so important. You know, that, that really shouldn't come as a shocker, right? right? The foods we eat can help our bodies heal or they can hurt our bodies, even if they're healthy foods. So the key here is identifying any foods that you might have allergies uh, to or might have a food intolerance or food sensitivity to, or even for that matter, foods that are high in histamine, which I'll be talking about in just a moment. Food allergies are tested different than food sensitivities. And a lot of times these words, food sensitivity, food allergy are used interchangeably, but they're very different. Um, allergies uh, activate a part of the immune system and involves what's known as an IgE immune system reaction. And your doctor can really easily test this through blood, right? Remember that when a person has an allergy to a food, the symptoms can come on very sudden, uh, sometimes within minutes from the time of exposure. And this can cause the acute kind of hives that often disappear shortly, right? For some people with Hashimoto's disease or hypothyroidism or rheumatoid arthritis or angioedema, they also may experience chronic hives. And these hives usually last for several weeks or several days for that matter. And for these people, I recommend testing for food intolerances, food insensitivities, and of course, food allergies as well. With food sensitivities or food intolerances, you may get hives that last several weeks, but this can also be tested in the blood. But this requires a special kind of test. With this kind of reaction, what you'll often see is elevated levels of IgA or IgG um, ant uh, antibody levels in the blood, right? Again, this is a different part of the immune system, so we're measuring a different immune system reaction to these foods. Now, I want to show you something. Here's a patient of ours who we tested, and this test uh, is, is about seven pages long, and so I'm only going to show you the first page here so you can kind of get a better feel for it. But what you'll notice is that everything in the yellow and the red are delayed immune system reactions uh, that were in part contributing to this patient's chronic hives. The reason why this special test is just so important is that sometimes identifying foods and culprits can be very, very challenging if you don't experience the symptoms right away the way you would in a food allergy. But again, this is why food intolerance and food sensitivities can be difficult to identify if you don't test them for both IgA and IgG immune reactions. Again, when we talk about histamine, it's a good idea to eliminate foods that are also high in histamine. Example of foods that uh, are high in histamine will be things that are fermented, foods that are smoked, uh, things like cheese and pickles, uh, kombucha, uh, lunch meats, cured meats, uh, collagen, believe it or not, bone broth, all right, all these things that you might be consuming on a regular basis because, you know, you heard that they were healthy. Now, there's a lot of additional foods um, that you should be aware of, too. So you can actually visit my website where I've gone through and listed out these a little, in a little bit more, um, a little bit more. So you can be aware of those. Now, once you know what foods are challenging your immune system, you can change your diet and you can dampen down this inflammatory response, of course, reducing the occurrence of these hives. The inflammatory response, reducing the occurrence of hives, becomes one of the most important areas. And because that's such a critical area to consider, the next area of health that we want to look at is your gut health, right? Pay special attention to your GI tract and how it's functioning day to day, right? What clues is your body trying to tell you? Do you have brain fog? Do you have physical fatigue? Do you have bloating? Do you have abdominal pain? Do you have acid reflux? Um, do you have gas? Do you, does your gas uh, smell like sulfur, like rotten eggs? Do you suffer with changes in bowel motility or diarrhea or constipation, right? These symptoms can be clues into the cause of chronic hives. And if you have these symptoms, you should start thinking about things like gut dysbiosis or SIBO or yeast overgrowth, things like leaky gut. Again, we mentioned histamine intolerance just a moment ago. So again, I've seen several gut issues all going on tied into hives. And again, the reason why sometimes you have to dig a little bit deeper than just um, diet. Um, again, all things worth investigating in the case of chronic hives. This particular patient whose food sensitivity test that I just showed you also had an overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestines 
known as SIBO. Maybe you've been hearing a lot about SIBO. Maybe you've been struggling with a lot of these signs, and you're starting to see that, again, there's a correlation between SIBO and, uh, and chronic hives. But this is the test that we ran on that same patient. And you can see here how the hydrogen levels were elevated. And when you have elevated levels of, of hydrogen or even methane, that's an indicator for bacterial overgrowth. Right? The third area that I want you to consider uh, when we talk about this big picture and the root cause of hives is hormone imbalances. Right Now, this might be thyroid hormones, but it might be also hormonal imbalances like uh, the adrenal glands, or it might even be your sex hormones like estrogen, testosterone, or progesterone. Right? So if you're a woman and you still have a menstrual cycle, do you notice that you get hives or even your allergies flare up or they're worse at certain times of the month? This might be something uh, that you never considered, right? But start paying attention to these subtle clues. Everything from a standpoint of a symptom is a sign that your body is really trying to tell you something. So I always look at these symptoms as clues, right? Now, the key in all of these things that we're talking about today is looking at the possible connections to the symptoms of the body or co-contributors, right? I like to look at symptoms, at how they correlate to different systems of the body and how those organs and glands are, again, co-contributors. So again, if you have symptoms in other parts of your body, then it only makes sense and, see, and, and seems worthy to investigate and see how these might be connected. This, again, is what I always talk about when I talk about the big picture. So. When hormone production is thrown off balance, basic body functions change. And along with that, histamine levels are one of them. Things like sex drive, loss of physical stamina, hot flashes, mood changes, irritability, changes in sleep pattern, weight gain. Earlier I said 45% to 55% of people with hives have an autoimmune disease with Hashimoto's being the most common. If you have all of those thyroid symptoms, consider getting a full thyroid panel or blood work done which includes testing for TPO and TGB antibodies. The fourth area I want you to think about when it comes to treating hives is histamine intolerance, right? When you have hives, do you experience sneezing and wheezing? Do you experience burning eyes or uh, flushing? Do you experience itchy skin? Have you ever noticed that certain foods trigger stomach cramps or diarrhea? You suffer with frequent headaches or migraines, bouts of nausea, severe menstrual cramps or panic attacks. Histamine prompts blood vessels to swell and fluid to leak from the capillaries, causing this redness and swelling and itching. So when someone develops histamine intolerance, the body's ability to break down histamine is not working as well as it should. And this could lead to higher levels of histamine in the blood, causing these chronic hives. Now, I want you to imagine a bucket, right? At any given moment, a bucket can only hold so much water. At some point, one extra drop into that bucket will cause an overflow. Each of us have a certain threshold for just how much histamine we can actually tolerate. And when the bucket's full, for a variety of reasons, maybe high amounts of histamine in the body from, again, several different causes, that one extra drop causes the bucket to overflow, and now you experience the hive symptoms. You may even go months uh, without a flare-up, but that's what can be so frustrating, right? So what does the body do to get rid of this extra histamine, right? Because that's the key here. If we have too much histamine, there has to be a mechanism within our body to get rid of it. Well, your body makes an enzyme. Well, actually, it makes two enzymes. But the fact of the matter is, if the bucket is full, or nearly full, the enzymes can't keep up with breaking down this histamine. And again, you experience this chronic hives. So hopefully right now you're thinking, well, what's in my bucket? What's filling up my bucket? Well, all the things we've talked about, food allergies, food intolerances, inflammation, gut dysbiosis, gut infections, hormone imbalances, thyroid problems, poor enzymatic function, or even a diet with high histamine foods. And believe it or not, even some of the medications that you are taking could be loading up your bucket. So let's talk about medications just for a moment, because I think this is, a, this is an important area. Again, many times people with, um, chronic hives are also perhaps sometimes taking antidepressants. Maybe they're on things like Prozac, or maybe they're depressed and they're taking things like Zoloft or Effexor, right? These are just to name a few, but we know that these medications, these antidepressants can cause hives. We know that they can cause more histamine release. We also know that, believe it or not, anti-inflammatories like aspirin and ibuprofen 
and even antihistamines that you're taking for allergies, Allegra, Zyrtec, and Benadryl, all of these medications in the long run can cause more histamine to build up in your body. So you might be saying, well, how is that possible? I don't understand this. How can I be taking a medication that causes more problems, right? Well, for some of you, that makes complete sense, but let me explain to you why. Here's why. Like I said earlier, antihistamines can cause more problems because they interfere with an enzyme called DAO. There's another enzyme as well called HNMT, and you can see these right here. Now, these are the ones that I mentioned earlier, but these are the ones that actually are responsible for breaking down histamine. So they become very, very important if that bucket's too full. Finally, when it comes to hives, I also like to think about things like infection and things like inflammation. I think in the, in the, in the, in the very root cause and the majority of, of problems that we see when we're talking about things like acne, psoriasis, eczema, inflammation is a key component. And again, what do we see with people who have hives? We often see these additional skin problems. So think about inflammation as being another potential cause. So the key here is what's driving or what's causing this inflammation, right? If you find out what's causing that inflammation, you'll fix the majority of the skin problems in your body, and that includes hives, all right? This is why, again, things like prednisone and cortisone are prescribed, right? Because they do such a great job at reducing inflammation. Hives, by its very nature, is an inflammatory condition. It's an immune-mediated condition, which is why steroids and anti-inflammatory medications on the surface, why they work so well. But as we can see, they don't fix the problem. So in closing today's video, don't accept hives um, as the, the cause of your problem, all right? as the cause of the itchy skin. All right? We live in a world where every cause has an effect. If you can find the cause, or multiple causes in this case, not only will your hives improve, but I guarantee you, you'll see such a drastic improvement in other areas of your health. Your gut will improve, your brain fog will disappear, you'll have more energy, uh, you'll lose weight, whatever else is going on. Right? Work with a doctor who will take the time and listen to these clues and put these things together. A doctor who will uh, look at all the different symptoms and really then investigate the root cause of what these health issues are. Solving any chronic health problem requires collecting these clues in order to solve the mystery. You think about hives, not so much as a condition to be treated, but rather that the hives are a clue that your body is out of balance in one or more areas. And again, that's why looking at the symptoms or the clues is so important. Again, think big picture. I want you to start thinking about hives as just another symptom. And the key is identifying the metabolic imbalances, filling up that bucket. And everybody's bucket is different. Your bucket could be filled to the brim today. And the things that are loading up your individual bucket is what your doctor needs to figure out. If all you do is guess about what your metabolic imbalances are, you'll never find out how to get better. You'll spend a lifetime on steroids and Benadryl for the rest of your life and all the meantime getting sicker and sicker. All right? So there you go. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember, if you feel stuck with your health and confused and you don't know where to start, we're here to help you. Right? Head over to my website. Look for the Start Here button. Whether you need help working on diet, implementing a, a specific kind of diet, or you need help digging deeper into the metabolic imbalances, some of the things we talked about today, we're here and we can help you with both of those. All right? So until next time, take care.